In this video we will be talking about how to use the array command and most speci more specifically though array rectangle. So we're going to roll in here to this part of the drawing. This is array rectangle and we're going to create what you see in the gold color there. We're going to turn the gold color off. That will make it easier for us to do it. So it says we're going to create a non-associative array. What is a non-associative array? Well, when you create an array, you take a group of objects, <coughs> or let's say a selection of objects, and you group them together. And that has a lot of power because at any time you can go in and modify the array, and all the objects that are grouped together in the array will change. But in this one, we're going to create a non-associative uh, so we can edit each individual piece. Now you can go in and edit an array such as using the array edit command um, but in this circumstance we're going to create a non-associative array which means all the objects that are in the array will not be tied to each other they won't be grouped together they will be objects that stand on their own. So we can go to the array rectangle right here or we can type in array rect. And so the first thing it asks you is select the object. So I will select the, the word and the circle with the center mark. And I'm going to right click or hit enter. And then it, of course, automatically creates an array by default. So if we read down here, it says create a row, create a nine row by one column rectangle that has 1.5 spacing between the rows. <coughs> so let's go back up here. And we only need one column, and we need nine rows. Now it's going to go up positive in the positive direction, which we don't want, and so we have to enter a negative 1.5. So there's our array. Right now the associative button is not on. Here it's on, here it's off. We want to keep it off so that <coughs> we can modify each one of these individual objects. Now we have to make sure it's right before I leave because once I leave and click the uh, close array we will not be able to click on it and go back in and modify the array because they're now it's they're just they're not grouped together uh, in a and you know basically turning them in turning them into one entity um, they're all individual but that's what we want at this time so then we can you know either type dd edit to change this red uh, word or I can double click on it or I can single click, right click and go to properties. <clears throat> so let's go back now to down to this array. I'm going to turn the answer key back on. It'll make it easier to see what we're doing. So it says we're going to create a four row by five column rectangular array that has 1.5 spacing between the rows, which is this way, and two inch spacing between the columns, which is this way. Okay. So this time I'll just go up and select Array Rectangle or Rectangular Array and it asks me a question. Select the object you want to array. Okay, so I can select it by left clicking on it and then I can right click or hit enter. And so of course by default it just creates a, uh, an array pattern for you. So we have five columns. <coughs> we have four rows. Alright, now if we remember it says we want 1.5 spacing between the rows which is this way, and we have two inches spacing between the columns, which is this way. Okay. So, the thing, here's our columns right here. So the thing we have to keep in mind is not only do we have to put the spacing they want, so between our columns they want two inches, we also have to put the width of the object, so that all has to be put in there together, so it would be four inches. Notice they line up perfectly now in line of the columns. And so now we'll do the rows. So they want 1.5 spacing in the rows, which you also have to account for the height of the object, which is 2 inches, so 3.5. And there it is. <coughs> now, this one we're going to turn the associative array on, and we're going to click close. So unlike the previous one, now when we click on it, it highlights and it opens our array ribbon our array rectangle ribbon back up so we can adjust it. We don't need to adjust it, but we're just demonstrating that that is an associative array. <clears throat> the final array 
uh, of this video is array edit and we've been talking about array edit a little bit as we worked on our different arrays so it says modify the rectangular array by using the edit source uh, option and it says uh, include a circle with a two point option and a donut so we want to make the array look like this object now they do look like the object but that's our answer key showing through so on this one we'll turn it off so now the array does not match this object here but we want it to so we're going to type array edit and we're going to, being asked to select the array okay <clears throat> then we have some options come up and the options we're going to deal with here is source we want to deal with the source option so I click on it and then it says, hey, select an item in the array that's going to be what we're going to modify. So I'll select this one. And then, before we enter into this, it's, it's giving, a, uh, uh, giving us a message. And it says, the source objects of the associative array can be edited while in the array editing state. Uh, enter array close to exit the array editing state. And at the very top it says, edit objects edit source objects in the associative array. It's asking that as a question, meaning is this what you want to do? And of course I do want to do this. You can uh, turn this, click on here, and it will never show it again. I don't do that though because I'm teaching students and they need to see and be reminded that the only way to get out of the array edit uh, option is to type array close. There won't be any prompting, there won't be a window. So as long as you remember that. So I always let this show every time. So I'm going to click OK. So now the object in the array that we clicked on is now highlighted and everything else is grayed out. Notice we're back to uh, what our regular ribbons for AutoCAD at the top because we can do anything to this object <coughs> just like we're in a normal drawing state. Uh, we have all tools available to us. So I'm going to go up to my circle option. I'm going to click on two point. There's my first point. There's my second point. Now I'm going to click on donut. I'm just going to type it in. My inner diameter is 0, my outer diameter, diameter is 0.2. And I'm going to put it right in the center. And there it is, so I hit escape. Now notice, <coughs> even though I'm still in the array edit option, notice how the array is adopting the changes I'm making to the source object. And notice there is no prompt. There's nothing down at the keyboard, there's nothing up at the top to alert me to how to get out of this array edit option. So we have to type array close. And then it says do you want to save the changes you made to this array? And I do. I'm now out of the array edit option <coughs> and my array has taken on the changes that I made to this source object. So now you can see why we had to create this one as a non-associative because anything I do to one of the objects, it's going to change it to all the objects, just like you see here. So I would not have been able to change this one, uh, text without it changing all of them and making them the same. So we had to create a non-associative array at the top, <coughs> but an associative array also has power because I've changed everything by changing one. And that is the end of this video.